All right, guys. So today we're gonna be reacting to why is talent fleeing Germany? Mm, interesting. Germany is a nice place to live. I don't know why people are fleeing from there. Let's see what they have to say. Let's jump in. Germany is not only a very wealthy country, it's also a country famous for running like clockwork and for producing things yeah. of very high quality. That at I least like is the reputation. If it's German, it's good. The fact is that over recent decades, Germany experienced one of the most significant economic miracles in history. We've already told you about it, both here on Visual Politic and on our sister channel, Visual Economic. Today, Germany is synonymous with high productivity, thriving companies, and highly skilled workers. However, it has one problem, a potentially very serious problem that we have not yet told you about, its inability to attract skilled labor. Have you ever considered going to work in Germany? I'm sure many of you have. I have. But I'm sure many more of you have thought about the UK, the Netherlands, Canada, Australia, or the US first. Despite being a very rich country with many jobs and what appears to be the opportunity to build great careers, Germany does not seem to be an attractive place for highly skilled workers. It ranks much worse than the rest. Is it because of the language? That's the only thing I'm, worried, um, I'm thinking of its comparable countries. It does not reach the extreme of Japan, but huh. it is an anomaly. An anomaly that would always be a problem, but even more so when your working age population is shrinking. So the question is, why on earth is Germany such an unattractive destination for highly qualified foreigners? What could this mean for what has traditionally been considered the driver of Europe? What is the government doing to remedy this situation? Well, in this video, we're going to answer all these questions. And who knows, maybe by the end of it, you will consider moving there. Or maybe not. Let's get started. Visual politic viewers, Germany is a top 10 country. And by that, I mean that it is almost always among the top 10 countries when we look at practically any index of well being and development GDP per capita, education levels, productivity levels, access to basic services, etc., etc. But its state of the art factories, its modern educational classrooms, and its more than enviable annual investment in techno industrial development would be meaningless if there were no teachers, engineers, doctors, workers, and professionals to put this immense productive apparatus into operation. And the problem, we can start to see the problem perfectly in this graph. According to official UN figures, the German population will start to shrink as of 2020. Oh, that's scary. That's scary. Oh, that is scary. Oh, that, that, that's not good, folks. Can some of you guys explain this to me? Why the population is shrinking in Germany? 23. From a total population of around 83 million people that it has at present, the forecast is for the 80 million mark to be breached by 2047 and to dip into the 70 millions by the last decade of this century. It is not as dramatic a contraction as is expected in countries such as Japan or South Korea, but it is still economically relevant. This data basically means not only less population, but also an aging population and therefore much less available labor. Logically, this is all in response to changes in birth patterns, but there is something else that can also increase the economic impact of this decline, the lack of talent retention. Yes, Germany receives a lot of immigration, that's for sure. It's likely that many of you have heard that. However, there is a problem in this story. Every time a highly skilled German worker retires, it is not easy to replace him or her, mm. because as we will see, in Germany, there is no surplus of immigration, but above all, there is no surplus of skilled immigration. Good so point. the question Good is- point. We have the same problem in the United States. That's not only in Germany. We have a lot of immigration, but it's low skilled immigration. And that, that's a problem because that means that you cannot keep the infrastructure alive. Who could say no to the German giant? Why are other destinations preferred? These are the questions we have to find answers to. In order to do so, the first thing of all has to be to understand how we got here. <laughs> The first demographic chimes. 
this is not an isolated case. Most developed countries, and also other not so developed countries, such as China and Russia, are experiencing an accelerated process of demographic aging. And take note because this process not only reduces the available labour force, but also considerably increases public spending. Think about it. Pensions, healthcare, dependence. Yeah. The fact is that Germany understood the problem, and guess what? It started to do its homework very early, no less than half a century ago. You see, in the 1970s, there was a turning point in Germany. Its native population began to shrink. That is, the country entered a phase of negative population growth. As you can see, since the 1970s, the number of deaths has exceeded the number of births every year. To compensate for this, Germany started to boost immigration. As you can see, the number of immigrants arriving each year is generally greater than the native loss of inhabitants. This has allowed the country to maintain its population growth over the years. Everything depends on the arrival of new immigrants. And if you look at the graph, you will see how at the beginning of the 21st century, the first alarm was sounded. The arrival of immigrants plummeted. At the beginning of the 21st century, almost all of Europe was growing and growing faster mm. than Germany. Germany was far from being the only flower in an ever expanding garden of prosperity. And that naturally had consequences. Competition slowed down the influx of new labor into German industries. The question is, what did they do? The truth is that the Germans took it very, very seriously. The government knew how important it was to attract young talent and maintain demographic expansion in order to prevent the economy and the social security system from going into crisis. So to achieve their goals, in addition to actively promoting- I feel like a lot of countries, we are going through the same problem. Very similar problems. Immigration, they also did things like this. Check it out. Germany's first immigration law goes into effect. Starting next year, new immigrants will be entitled to participate in state-funded German language classes and receive an introduction to the country's legal system, culture and history. The government has earmarked more than 200 million euros for the scheme. The measures worked. And the net number of immigrants arriving in the country each year almost tripled. From 73,000 in 2004, the number increased to 212,000 in 2008. And not only that, by 2016, one of the historical ceilings in terms of immigrant population was hit. 432,000 non-Germans moved to live in this country. Of course, Germany is part of the European Union. So what does that mean? That the country is subject to free mobility of people and workers. Any of the EU members can become a rival country for labor, a growing competition that Germany does not seem to have been able to manage very well. Danke, but no danke. From 2013 onwards, the influx of immigrants to Germany started to slow down again. And even worse, according to OECD reports, the country was becoming less and less attractive for the arrival of professionals. Because, and this is very important, not all people are equal. Logically, from an economic point of view, qualifications count. And that is why the OECD issued this warning. Look at this. Labor migration. Germany is open to graduates, but immigration is difficult for medium-skilled workers. And why did the OECD say this? Basically, because of this. Pay attention to the data. Germany is one of the OECD countries with the lowest barriers to immigration for highly skilled workers. However, the number of immigrant workers from outside the EU and the European free trade area it receives is 2,500 per year, about 0.02% of the population. The rate of skilled immigrant workers received by Australia, Denmark, Canada and the United Kingdom is 5 to 10 times higher. OECD German Labour Market Report 2013 In other words, it was supposedly relatively easy to emigrate to Germany but even so, skilled workers preferred, and still prefer, other destinations. Whether because of the language, the standards, or the life. I don't think the language will be a problem. It's a lot of people in Germany speak English. So they can just English themselves into Germany. So I don't think that the language is a problem. Um, it might be that there's no opportunities. Can we consider that? And opportunities. Hmm. Lifestyle. The fact is that Germany is not a popular destination. Beautiful place, man. 
clean. Of course, that's not the Everything whole story. Beautiful. A survey conducted by the Swiss-based International Institute for Management Development found that German employees' perception of the ease of recruiting international talent was rather poor. In other words, the OECD report did not accurately reflect the entire reality. It seems that red tape has been a problem for a decade now. In some ways, legislation to attract skilled immigration dating back to 2005 was becoming obsolete compared to the incentives on the table in neighboring countries. Therefore, between 2018 and 2020, the German parliament started to make several changes to the act. Changes to make it easier for professionals from outside the European Union. For example, it was made easier for immigrants to arrive without a contract. However, just then, the pandemic completely changed the picture. It brought the arrival of new immigrants to a screeching halt. Immigrants of all kinds, skilled and unskilled. And that, in the long run, only aggravated the problems. Since 2013, the Federal Labor Agency itself has been monitoring what the authorities refer to as bottleneck occupations. That is, areas of the labor market where job vacancies cannot be filled by available workers. In 2020, this situation cooled down, but since then, the trend has returned. More and more areas of the German economy are unable to get the skilled workers they need. In mm. fact, this indicator is expected to break records in 2023. The post-pandemic economic upturn, coupled with the growing demographic aging, is pushing the German labor market into an, an increasingly critical context. While the demand for workers continues to grow, the number of immigrants arriving each year has decreased, not to mention the number of skilled immigrants. To give you an idea about what we're talking I think that's about, according to estimates- That's estimate an important distinction, skilled immigrants. Skilled immigrants. I think that's their main, that's their main concern, skilled immigrants by the German Economic Institute in Cologne. By mid-2022, there were already 1.5 million vacancies in this country, a figure okay. that is expected to grow strongly over the next few years. The situation has reached such an extent that some commercial areas have had to start providing their services on a reduced basis. And this, in fact, what explains news stories like this. Germany will use temporary foreign workers to ease staff shortages at German airports. Photos of travelers standing in long lines at security checkpoints at Dusseldorf Airport earlier this week showed the extent of the shortage. In other words, the German economy really? is in urgent need of labor of all kinds. Really? So Germany cannot find people that can work those kind of jobs? According to estimates by the German Institute for Labor Market and Employment Research, at least 400,000 new arrivals are needed each year to keep the workforce stable. That's already a problem. But, visual politic viewers, the free skilled labor thing, that's already almost an endangered species in this country. According to a survey conducted in December 2022, seven out of 10 companies are short of skilled labor. Not only that, but Germany is now facing another problem. It's no longer that few skilled workers are arriving, it's that many of the ones they did have are leaving. In other words, the country is suffering a brain drain. And that, that is something that endangers the formidable industry that fuels Europe's greatest economic engine. But let's go back to the question we asked at the beginning. How on earth is it possible that there are almost no professionals that want to live and work in one of the most developed countries in the world? Where is the problem? Well, listen up. Okay, come on now. Come on now. The three pillars of the talent drain. If we try to go straight to the heart of the matter, we could say that Germany faces three major problems, each of them linked to the others. For example, first of all, the stock of human capital from Europe cannot be expected to last forever. And why do I say this? Well, you see, according to official figures, Serbia has lost 9% of its inhabitants in the last three decades. North Macedonia, 10%. Bosnia and Herzegovina, 24%. And Albania, 37%. Wow. And something very similar could be said about Poland and the Baltic republics, among others. All these countries have lost a large proportion of their best educated and most qualified young people. And let's not forget, Europe is a very aging continent. So the pool of skilled workers available for German companies to recruit is limited. Basically, the pool of skilled workers is no longer large enough. 
Along these lines, many experts believe that the initial effect of the EU expansions has already come to an end. Perhaps Ukraine was the only exception, but this country has also already suffered a huge exodus of skilled workers, particularly of young people. For this reason, many analysts point out that the search for talent must look beyond continental borders. And do you know what? This is exactly what led the 2020 reform of the Skilled Immigration Act to introduce more facilities for skilled immigrants from third countries. For example, university degrees were no longer required, but vocational training was also accepted as proof of uh, Germany, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I would not suggest that. I would not suggest that. They're Germans. German people, listen to me. I would not suggest that. You still will. I will. Those third, third world countries, they do have universities. So I will still recommend to have that as a priority. Qualification. A demand that German employers have been making for some time. Why? Just take a look at this graph. Of course, this was not the only measure. Some administrative formalities were also reduced, but the main stumbling block was not solved, which is none other than this. The bureaucratic German immigration system is extremely complex. That At least seven minutes- I think that, um, that might be the problem are involved in the process without taking into account second-tier government agencies and local governments. To give just one example, the approval of a qualified professional would involve the Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs and Climate Action, the Ministry of Labour and Social Affairs, the Ministry of Education and Research, the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of the Interior and Community, and the Ministry of Economic Cooperation and yeah. Development. So, pretty straightforward. This obviously poses a major disincentive for German companies. In 2022, only 17% of the companies surveyed by the Bertelsmann Foundation recruited skilled workers from abroad. And while large companies can hire consultancies and law firms to speed up the process, SMEs face an almost insurmountable barrier. That is, in a way, the 2020 eligibility extension was a step in the right direction to start attracting professionals from outside the European Union. However, it did not prepare the bureaucracy for such a challenge. Yeah. Mobility yeah. within the common European bloc is much simpler, but when you start incorporating professionals from other regions, the documentation and requirements multiply. It is infinitely more difficult and costly to incorporate a Thai or Uruguayan worker than a Polish one. This is the second problem. And finally, the third major stumbling block has to do with a much more complex factor, the cultural one, if only because of the language. In August 2022, the German Federal Employment Agency turned its attention to this issue. And do you know what it found? That most workers who arrive in Germany without knowing German do not even bother to try to learn it. Why? Because they're already thinking of leaving. Language integration wow, problems. Really? Problems in obtaining permanent residences. Housing. Wait, wait, really? I would not even think about such thing, huh? That would be a huge motivation to learn the language. That'll be another skill in your back pocket. Interesting. In costs, cost of living and taxes, problems in reuniting the family in the country and the clash with the local culture are the most frequent arguments given by skilled workers who decide to leave Germany. This is something we have actually already told you about on Visual Economic. To make matters worse, the immigration legislation clashes with a new type of work that is practically ignored. Freelancers. Well, these three problems seem to explain why Germany is not as attractive a country as it apparently should be. The question is, is there a way out? What are German politicians doing? Well, we're going to take a look at that right now. Retaking the job appeal. Estimates by the German Ministry of Labour suggest that if this situation is not reversed by 2026, more than 200,000 jobs currently filled will become vacant, a situation that could have a very negative impact on companies, productivity, and the country's economic growth. Therefore, in October 2022, the issue will be at the top of the public agenda. How Germany plans to attract qualified foreigners. Reforms include the introduction of a so-called opportunity card that will entitle people to seek work in Germany following a point system based on language skills, professional experience, and connection to Germany, okay. among okay. other criteria. And finally, on 29th of March, 
March, the qualified immigration law was amended again. Foreigners with adequate work experience and education in their home country will be allowed to work in Germany, even if those professional qualifications are not recognized in Germany. In addition, they will be allowed to work up to 20 hours per week while looking for long-term employment. Finally, it will be possible for persons in possession of academic degrees or professional certificates to remain in Germany for up to one year while seeking employment. Will this new reform work? Only time will tell. The question now is, would you consider living in Germany? Would you like to? How do you think this country could boost the arrival well, of new talent? Idea. Leave us your answers in the comments and let's open a debate. And now if you think- You know, that's, that's not a bad idea. Just, man, I, I didn't know German was going through this kind of problem. Very similar, very similar. We have a problem with immigration, but low skilled immigration. There are too many. There are too many. And that, that drive wages down. Right, because people start start pay, they pay illegals under the table, and they don't they don't sorry they don't put that in the IRS. So that's why the wages are down. It's a lot of them, a lot of them. restaurants, uh, farms, constructions, huge problem. <sighs> Germans, let me know what you guys think. Is this real? Are you guys going through this, or is this all noise? I'll see you in the next one.